Growing up in Buffalo, New York, Edith Flanagan knew even in high school that chemistry was her calling. We're making something, being creative and putting the materials together to make a new material. After graduating with a master's degree in chemistry from Syracuse University, she found work at Union Carbide in Tonawanda, New York. It had an unusual, exciting, inventive, creative atmosphere. There were chemists, there were physicists, there were chemical engineers, there were mechanical engineers, and we interacted a great deal. It was a very, very strong, uh, held together community. That kind of cooperative working environment is what Edie Flanagan fosters. Always ready to share credit, she believes that the best ideas grow out of collaboration. Each individual is different. And if you can blend that together and synergize their interaction, I think that's the way you get the best results. It was at Union Carbide that Flanagan's boss presented her team with a surprising challenge. He actually came to us and said, I want you to discover the next generation of electricity materials. And we had never had such a challenge. After months of study and experimenting, Flanagan, along with Stephen Wilson and Brent Locke, made their remarkable discovery uncovering an entirely new class of zeolites, or molecular sieves. These are crystalline structures that are instrumental as catalysts and adsorbents in certain chemical reactions and separations. They work by selectively ferreting out molecules according to size. All of the chemistry, the uh, applications, take place inside of these porous crystals. Smaller molecules will go through and be adsorbed are taken into this cavity, and larger molecules that are larger than this pore will be excluded. Before her research, all molecular sieves contained aluminum, silicon, and oxygen. But Flanagan chose to examine other elements from the periodic table. The result? A new generation of substances, each potentially useful in different kinds of chemical reactions. Perhaps even more significant, Flanagan also developed the processes to make an existing molecular sieve called Zeolite Y, used to make gasoline and jet fuel commercially feasible. To go from the discovery of a new material to scale it up into a reasonable quantity and to determine the properties and to determine the applicability and applications and then to commercialize the application is a big stretch. So I actually worked out the process that successfully went from the laboratory into the final manufacture. Flanagan's new generation of molecular sieves are used to make certain types of motor oil, as well as to make ethylene and propylene, key elements in many plastics. But zeolites are transparent to most consumers. They don't know zeolites make gasoline. The zeolite A is now used in all detergents to replace the environmentally suspect phosphate. And in fact, if you have a box of detergent, you see in the label that it says it has silicate in it. But that's a zeolite A. And it can be as high as 40% of the detergent composition. In the field of materials science, Edith Flanagan's work is unsurpassed. At a time when few women were making strides in the sciences, Flanagan and her two sisters all worked at Union Carbide as chemists. And her discoveries, that have resulted in more than 100 patents, have revolutionized the world of molecular sieve materials. I think that it's in many ways uh, helped the environment, it's helped the energy situation, it's uh, certainly excited many other materials researchers to build on the uh, new generation that we discovered. In fact, it almost exploded in that area. Even now, at age 75, she still consults for UOP the joint venture formed to further develop molecular sieve applications, and her passion for invention is still as strong as ever. You know, the growth of the United States has largely been based on inventions, and our prosperity has largely been based on inventions, but it's not generally recognized, so it really has to be promoted. <laughs>